Guys, this video is relatively short kasi dito pag-uusapan lang natin or basically introduce ko lang sa inyo yung accounting for doubtful accounts. And the following episodes will deal with the computations per se. So halika, umpisahan na natin itong episode na ito. Guys, para makakonek na naman ako sa inyong mga sarili, ano, uh, sa mga love life nyo ba, have you ever felt na parang may tinatago itong aking jowa, ano, itong aking boyfriend or girlfriend? So, in such cases, nagdududa ka, nagiging doubtful ka. And, relating it to our discussion for today, ayan, dahil doubtful ka, nagkatotoo tuloy. So, anong gagawin ko? Paano ko ito i-account? Uh, guys, When we are dealing with doubtful accounts, meron tayong bagong account na ginagamit. Uh, dalawa ito. Yung isa, yung nasa balance sheet. At yung pangalawa, yung nasa income statement. O, etong naka-project sa inyo, ito yung ating bagong account na makikita sa income statement part. We have the doubtful accounts expense. We have the uncollectible accounts expense. And we have the bad debts expense. And etong tatlo lang, etong tatlo na ito, iisa lang yung kahulugan niyan. At yung ibig sabihin niyan is meron ako ang inestimate na hindi ko na makokolekta, deemed uncollectible. And it is usually used interchangeably. Depende sa author, depende sa book, depende sa kanyang discretion kung saan siya mas sanay or alin yung mas gusto niyang gamitin. Pero pare-parehas lang 'yan. They mean the same, okay? Now, it represents the amount of receivables that may not be collected, na maaaring hindi makolekta. Uh, this is an expense account that can be found in the income statement, kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina. O, papaano ba natin ito ina-account? Guys, I have here the journal entry format. When we are accounting for doubtful accounts, that, o, yung mga receivables that may not be collected, We debit the doubtful accounts expense and we credit allowance for doubtful accounts. O kaya, kung uncollectible accounts expense yung ginamit natin as a debit, we credit allowance for uncollectible accounts. O kung bad debts expense naman yung dinebit natin, dapat ang kabanggaan niyan, allowance for bad debts. O bakit ko ito pinipresenta sa inyo? Just for consistency, kung ang ginamit mo, doubtful accounts, yung ilagay mo sa allowance ay doubtful accounts din. Kung ginamit mo, uncollectible accounts, ilagay mo, uncollectible accounts. Ang pangit lang kasi na doubtful accounts expense yung nasa income statement, pero ang ginamit mo, allowance for doubt, uh, for doubt, bad debts. Although okay lang naman yan, pero ako personally, ano, mas gusto ko na kung ano yung term na ginamit dito, mas maganda, yun na rin yung gamitin mo for the balance sheet item. Now, since nabanggit ko yung balance sheet item, etong mga allowance na ito ay makikita ninyo sa balance sheet account as a contra-receivable account or contra-asset, kagaya ng statement dito. The allowance account is a contra-asset account for accounts receivable and can be found in the balance sheet. So, pag tinanong ka, yung allowance for doubtful accounts is this an asset a liability an equity an income or state <laughs> income or statement income or expense account the answer will be this is an asset account but to be more particular or to be more specific this is a contra asset account o para mas specific pa lalo this is a contra receivable account so Makikita ninyo ito sa baba ng receivable. Di ba, meron tayong depreciation expense at meron tayong accumulated depreciation? O ganun din yung effect niya, ganun din yung kanyang konsepto. Di ba sa depreciation, we debit depreciation expense for that particular asset and then we credit accumulated depreciation. Dito naman, o we debit yung expense account and we credit allowance for doubtful accounts or bad debts or uncollectible account at 
ang effect kasi nito is binabawasan nito yung net value ng iyong receivable account. Kasi yung receivable, nire-record natin siya sa kung magkano talaga. Kagaya ng mga assets, nire-record natin ito at cost kasi gusto natin maipakita magkano talaga yung historical cost niya. Pero meron tayong depreciation or your accumulated depreciation kung saan yung difference nitong dalawa ang tawag natin doon ay net book value dito naman sa receivables you have the carrying value of your receivable account um, uh, yung amount na yon less your allowance for doubtful accounts ang difference nila ang tawag doon is your net realizable value or NRV or now Later on, mapagsasampulan naman natin ito eh, through the illustrations. Pero sa ngayon, I just want to, you to know and you to learn that we have methods of accounting for uncollectible accounts. Kagaya ng makikita ninyo dito sa screen. Uh, the methods of accounting for uncollectible accounts are as follows. The first one is allowance method and the second one is the direct write-off method. Pagdating kasi sa allowance method, meron tayo dito ang matching principle or may matching concept. Yung recognition of expenses based on matching principle kasi kung kailan merong possibility na hindi makolekta, doon natin ito in-expense. The estimates, oh, kasi pag allowances, ito ay estimate. Hindi ito accurate. Ano? At ang estimates kasi ay based on past experience and Okay, uses an allowance account to pull bad debtors. Nalalaman kasi natin kung magkano yung i-set aside natin as allowance for doubtful accounts because of previous experiences. Marami, uh, libawa, ako ay isang lending institution, lending company, nagpapautang ako. And based on records, around 5% ng lahat ng mga receivables ko ay hindi nababayaran or hindi nakokolekta. So that, By the following year, kung kailan yung current year, oh, dahil based on previous experience, hindi ako nakakakolekta 5% ng total receivables, o oh, magsiset aside ako ng allowance para ma-value ko yung aking receivable at, yung, at the net realizable, kung magkano talaga yung marirealize ko. So, that is what we called the allowance method. Pagdating kasi sa direct write of method, at etong direct right of method ay hindi inaalaw ng accounting standards. Wala tayong minimaintain na account for allowance met, uh, allowance account. Kung masisigurado mo na na hindi makokolekta kung kailan nangyari yon, tinakbuhan ka na hindi na talaga nabayaran, oh, nag right off na agad ako. Oh, this one, we will deal later. Pero ang pag-uusapan natin, especially sa mga susunod na episodes, ay etong allowance method muna. O oh guys, moving on the allowance method, meron tayong dalawang klase ng method dito. The first one is the percentage of sales and the second one is the aging of receivables. Now, etong dalawa na ito, magkaiba yung atake, magkaiba yung approach. Pagdating kasi sa percentage of sales, it focuses on the expense account. Magkano yung i-expense natin ngayon? Kaya ang tawag natin dito ay income statement approach. Samantalang yung aging of receivables kasi, ang focus naman nito, magkano or ilan yung i-maintain natin na allowance for doubtful accounts. Kaya nga, ang tawag din natin dito sa approach na ito ay balance sheet approach. Uh, this one, ano? Uh, so just follow me through this um, slides. Okay? O oh, guys, On the next episode, we will talk about the percentage of sales and on the next next episode, pag-usapan naman natin yung aging of receivables with the respective illustrations para maintindihan ninyo kung paano ito tinatakel, paano natin ito ina-account. Pero kung meron kayong mga katanungan regarding sa pinag-usapan natin ngayon, uh, please let me know and comment down below. So guys, maraming salamat sa patuloy ninyo na pagsusuporta sa aking channel, sa panunood ninyo ng aking mga videos, and I hope you learned a lot from me through this video lectures. So I'll see you again on the next episode. Bye-bye!